welcome back. This is the second of three videos I'm making about the analog synth modules from Danny Sound. In the previous video, I gave a rundown of the six synth modules in the range, along with some West Coast style patches based around the wave folding and wave shaping features in the Kaliosk and the Tamba. So if you want to find out a bit more about what the modules do, go back and watch that one first. In this video, I'm going to showcase seven more patches that explore some techniques for animating oscillators. I'm going to demo the Through Zero Linear FM, which is a big selling point for the EN129 oscillator, and I'm also going to look at Logarithmic FM on both the Kaliosk and the EN129, and I'll explore some other features like PWM, sawtooth modulation, and even some audio rate waveform switching. So let's get right into it. Okay, so this patch is going to explore the Through Zero Linear FM capabilities of the EN129 oscillator. Down here I've got the Mosqua sequencer clocked from Pamela's new workout and I'm just going to patch in a very simple sequence. So that's just a sine wave through the VCA with a short envelope playing a little sequence. Now I'm going to take a copy of the pitch into the modulating oscillator and just get some through zero FM going on. in a nice ratio that's quite a nice square wavy kind of sound but it's also quite static so let's have a go at taking the same envelope to a VCA controlling the amount of that modulation that's going to go into the through zero FM input now I'm going to take it via this adder down here for reasons that will become clear in a little while but all that's really happening is I'm just going straight through here into the input of this VCA so into the CV input of that VCA, not the actual input. The actual input is going to be fed from the output of that modulating oscillator. And then the output of the VCA will go into there. And we're going to take the another copy of the Volt Peroctive into the modulating oscillator again. So now, as I bring up this VCA, that's enveloping the amount of that FM that's coming in. Still a little bit static, so I'm going to take another copy of the gate. Let's get that into the trigger of uh, R&D step and get a few extra bits of modulation. I'm going to take the unipolar output to the decay time of the envelope. So we'll get some occasional longer notes. And I'll take the bipolar into this adder. So now the envelope will be have a random amount of voltage added or subtracted from it as well as it goes into the VCA. So we're just getting a little bit more variation. And of course we can just dive into another just pick a kind of modulating frequency that works. So that's sounding pretty nice as a as a sound. We've got some nice um, slightly randomized FM amount going into the N129. However, that sequence is a little bit boring. So I've um, set up a few things here on Pamela's new workout just to control the Mosqua. So this first output, I've got an occasional uh, ex extra volt. So every other bar, it's going to increase the range. And I've got a similar thing with the randomization. introduce some randomness occasionally at the start of each second phrase and then I've got another one which will transpose it every two bars and if we add some drums to this as well and then if we just dial up around with this frequency modulator again Thing. I've got another offset from PAMS which I can add to the Volt Peroctive sequence it's feeding the modulator so it will it will jump up an octave occasionally as well so that 
a nice dynamic evolving sequence. And of course, if we dial back this VCA, we're just back to the sine wave on its own. Just saturate that a bit more, bring that modulation back in. Okay, for this next batch, I'm going to look at using logarithmic FM to make some kind of techno electro percussion effect kind of loops. Um, both these Danny Sound oscillators have got log FM inputs, but for this demo, I'm going to use the Kaliosk. At the moment, I've just got the sine wave of that going through the VCA with no shaping or modulation at all. It just sounds like this. And for my kind of source pitch information for the loop, I'm going to use a one bar triangle uh, LFO. Unipolar or LFO coming out of Pamela's new workout. If I just plug that straight into the volt per octave, you'll hear it's just a five octave sweep that sounds like this. Which is kind of pretty, pretty wide range and not that useful. So I'm going to run it through the Tamba wave folder, um, which will bend that shape around a little bit in an interesting way. If I take that also through the quadrat for some offset and attenuation. It means I can control the range of it a little bit and make it a bit more useful. And the settings I found that work quite well is the symmetry at 12 o'clock, uh, the blend halfway to, so we're getting some of the original um, triangle coming through and a bit of offset and a bit of attenuation from the quadrat sounds like this. So it's the same idea, just a sweeping thing over one bar. But now as I bring up the wave folding, start to get some interesting up and downy kind of shapes and because this is kind of looping over a one bar if I patch in a kick drum just to give it a little bit of rhythmic context you'll hear how it sounds in relation to that beat so by adjusting this timbre we can get a different kind of pattern we obviously need a bit of rhythm if we're going to make this into a rhythmic kind of loop. So I've got another output of Pamela's new workout, which I'm going to use for a gate pattern. And that's going to go into the gate input of the envelope. That'll sound like this. So this is just a sine wave. Already sounds quite cool, but um, there's a lot more we can do to modulate this. So if I take a copy of the same pitch into the second oscillator. I'm just going to take the sine wave out of the AM129 into the log FM input here. I'm just going to leave the frequency a little bit above that one for the moment. If I start to bring up the log FM, It's a lot 
less predictable than the through zero FM from the previous patch. But you can find some pretty cool by playing with that envelope and this frequency relationship and the amount of log FM here. As you adjust the timbre again, you can change that pattern slightly. Just add a bit more variety. I'm going to duplicate that gate signal and I'm going to take a copy of it into R&D step. And you've probably seen me do this before by now, but I'm going to take a unipolar output from there into the decay time of the envelope, which will basically ex lengthen some notes, kind of acting as little random accents. Let's see how that sounds. And I said there was a reason why I'd chosen the Kalioscope over the EN129. The other reason is I've got another slower gate pattern coming out of PAMS, which I'm going to feed into the wave shape CV here. You can see when this, when that modulation light comes on, it's basically morphing this into a square wave, which is being FM'd by this oscillator. We can play with the attenuation and offset a little bit. Play with the timbre, wave folding again. the envelope settings a little bit. So it's very easy to get some pretty cool little percussive kind of loops. So one really cool way to animate an analog oscillator is to take two of its waveform outputs and then use a voltage controlled switch to switch between them mid-cycle so that you end up with a new waveform shape. Uh, to demo this today I'm going to use the EM129's um, sine and square which I've got feeding into the Dopefer A150 um, dual voltage controlled switch into the two inputs. I'm going to take the output through the scope so you can see what's going on as well as hear it. At the moment there's nothing connected to the CV input so there's nothing actually controlling the switching so it's just feeding through the first channel which is the sine. But if I connect an offset voltage into the CV input, which I'm going to take from the quadrat off screen, and if I turn up the voltage on that, switches to square, and turn it down, it switches back again. So I can just do that manually. But this gets a bit more interesting if we take, instead of a slow manual switch like that, if we take the pulse output of the same oscillator, which is oscillating at the same frequency as the other two, and put that into the CV input. And we can see immediately and hear that we have a kind of hybrid waveform now that's half square, half sine. Sounds a bit like a pulse because that's kind of what it is with a bit of sine on one side. And if I adjust the pulse width, that will control the point at which 
it switches within the cycle. So. so we get this kind of enhanced PWM. And of course we can feed some modulation into that CV input for the PWM. So let's just take the sine output of the Kaliosk in LFO mode. nice kind of animated shape that's morphing between a near sine and a near square. And if I increase that modulation rate, and some really cool waveforms like this, which as you can see are a kind of chopped up sine wave kind of shape with these moving pulses. Of course the beauty of this is there's all sorts of other combinations you can try. You don't have to switch with the same oscillator, you could switch with the Kaliosk instead. So let's just try that. Let's take the Kaliosk into a square wave mode. And let's take the output of that. So now we've got a switching oscillator which is not synced to the oscillator that we are switching the waveforms between. So let's just hear that for a second. Get some pretty cool shapes dancing around like this. with a fine tune is really helpful. You can kind of dial in on something that moves either a lot or hardly at all. And let's try switching between the triangle and the sawtooth. And what I'm going to do as well is take an LFO, in this case from Oct, and I'm going to take that into the sawtooth modulation, which if I just take out the switching for a sec. So now it's just, this is just the sawtooth output. And this is the sawtooth animation, which is the same input as the PWM on the EN129 oscillator. And you can see it's just kind of morphing between this. It's kind of moving these two sides of the waveform up and down. And if we start switching again, while that's happening, we get an even more complex kind of waveform. I'm going to dial in these almost chord-like tones. So here I've just patched up a simple voice um, with the same kind of setup to take a sequence from the key step 37. I've got the volt per octave um, being fed from the pitch. I've got a gate trigger in the envelope, which is feeding the filter and the VCA. Um, I've got the same modulation setup as before, running through Monsoon for a tiny bit of granular delay and reverb. And here's how the sequence sounds with the waveform looking like this. Let's just bring that filter down a bit. to that filter. Just a bit of LFO to the filter cutoff, just a smidge to animate it slightly. And as we play around with that switching oscillator, we can get a whole range of tones.
So like many filters, the multi-mode ladder filter from Danny Sound can self-oscillate at high resonance. So if you just jack that up, you can hear a sine wave. And we can get some interesting tones if we frequency modulate that with another oscillator. So let's take the sine wave from the EN129. So I'm going to take it into one of these two CV inputs. So you can hear lots of wild and crazy FM sort of tones to be had there. This gets quite interesting for another kind of west coasty patch if we take, let's take a sequencer, uh, volt per octave. We'll take it into both because there's a second CV input on the filter um, and it will track volt per octave at maximum CV input as well. Um, but let's also take the gate from a sequencer into an envelope. And let's use an LPG for this patch. And let's also run the output of the LPG through a spring reverb. So we've now got the output of the filter into an LPG, which is gonna be pinged by this envelope with everything down. Let's hear how this sounds with the sequence. So there are loads of sweet spots between these three controls, between the frequency of this modulating oscillator, the amount of FM from that, and the volt per octave signal from the sequencer. And what's interesting is if you take that volt per octave down from maximum, so one's tracking the pitch exactly and one isn't, you get these really nice atonal kind of sequences. Is that a bit of spring to that? PG in its VCF mode, a bit of resonance. Thank you. 
So as you can hear, there's loads of amazing tones to be had just from tweaking those three controls, that modulating oscillator frequency, the amount of CV from that, and the amount of pitch tracking CV too. You can get a whole world of really amazing percussive kind of sequences once you pair that with an LPG and some spring. 